Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome to this service of worship on this Memorial Day weekend. My name is Chuck Hasty. I'm the pastor of Grace Presbyterian Church, ECO. We welcome you once again to this time of worship. And if this is your first time, we, uh, we give you a special warm welcome. We're thrilled that you're with us on this Lord's Day. Let us be called to worship with this Psalm of David one that has meant a great deal to me in my life, in my ministry, but on this day, as uh, we gather for a soft opening and we have officers of our church and others from our hospitality and security team here with us preparing for the welcome of our covenant partners and friends in the community for next week, um, there are a few more of us here this morning, all masked uh, but looking beautiful. And uh, we, we uh, rejoice that we can hear these words and share them with you on this day of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city which is bound firmly together, to which tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks in the name of the Lord. The, their thrones for judgment were set, the thrones for the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brothers and sisters and companions' sake, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord I God, our God, I will seek your good. The word of the Lord, welcome to this time of worship. Will you pray with me, please? And Father God, we do give you thanks and praise for every day. We give you most high praise for this, the day that you have set apart for our good, for our welfare, and for the worship of your holy name. And Father, on this holiday weekend, a time when we pause from our busy lives and remember the great sacrifices of those men and women who have gone before us in service for God and country, who have given the greatest sacrifice by laying down their lives for us and for our freedoms. And Father, we do not take those freedoms for granted. They are not free, but the price of those who have gone before us has been paid. And the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, is that greatest life, that perfect life that was laid down for us for our freedom for, from sin, and for our freedom to serve fully and freely in your name. And so, Father, receive our grateful praise on this day as free, uh, as free people. And, Father, it is for freedom that you have set us free. And we recognize on this Memorial Day weekend, in this season of pandemic, that there are others who are stepping to the front lines and have given their lives not with uh, a gun or in battle, but, Father, who have uh, made the precious sacrifice for the good of others by serving in our medical field. We, we praise you for, for uh, selfless doctors, for skillful nurses, for uh, first responders, for researchers, Father. We lift up all those who are making sacrifices and have made sacrifices, those as we fight this invisible enemy. Uh, you have called us to be warriors in your name, and we do so gratefully and humbly and in love. Now receive the offering of our praise as we come to worship you, whether it is through our live stream broadcast or here in this place that we do not take for granted as well. A place of worship that has been provided by you through the generosity and hospitality of Rock Presbyterian Church. We ask that you would bless all brothers and sisters and our brothers and sisters in that church as uh, they gather just down the hall from us to worship and praise your holy name. Wherever we find ourselves, Father, we lift up our whole selves to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning we welcome you again to this live broadcast. And as I've said, uh, this is a soft opening for us and we are preparing to, to welcome a limited capacity next week on Pentecost, a beautiful day to open the church. And uh, to give you some more news about the decision of our elders, our session, our governing body, about those plans for next week, I want to call back once again uh, Sam Hall to bring more detailed information to you. So, Sam, would you please come up? Absolutely. Thank you, Chuck. Yes. 
first of all, I want to tell all of you who are here with us today, it is so good to see your faces again. It's been a long time. It's great that we welcome you back, friends and fellow uh, covenant partners here at Grace. And, uh, but if you'll excuse me for just a minute, I'm going to look at this camera and talk to the people that are at home. As you know, for the last uh, couple of months, we've been live streaming our, our service to you. And, uh, but it is so great to have, uh, to have you know, people here with us today. And during that time, we've had a group of about five or six of us who have been here every Sunday. And it's been our pleasure to work together to bring to you this live streaming uh, service in as uh, professional and pleasant a way as we can. But uh, now is the time to regather here at Grace, and it's a great day to, uh, to begin that process. Um, I think that uh, you know, during the time that we've been working slowly here to do this, we uh, have kind of formed a bond uh, of the team here that's been doing it. But like I say, it's, it's time now to get all of you back in here with us. And a couple of three weeks ago, your session voted unanimously to uh, set next Sunday, the 31st of May, as the uh, what I'll call the official regathering day here at Grace. And uh, we want to mention to you that although that's the date that we uh, decided to, uh, to start, we want you to take into consideration your own personal uh, situation and decide whether uh, this is the right, next Sunday will be the right day for you and your family to come, or you may choose to wait a little bit. And that's certainly your, uh, your decision. We want you to respect it, think about it, and most of all, pray about it, and you'll make the right decision. You probably heard the news a couple of days ago that President Trump uh, declared that churches are essential and directed the governors to begin uh, opening churches uh, actually on next Sunday, or actually this Sunday. Um, and at the corresponding with that, the CDC issued some guidelines as to how you could safely reopen uh, your churches. And I saw the, the list that they've uh, uh, released and I thought at the time they must have been listening to our session maybe <laughs> or uh, have intercepted some of our correspondence because what the CDC is saying is pretty much uh, dead on what your, your session has decided to do. And let me take a moment to tell you some of what has been done and what will be done. We've already had a professional cleaning crew come in and sanitize all of our facilities here so they'll be safe and clean. Uh, we're going to incur, uh, uh, actually observe uh, social distancing as you sit here in the sanctuary uh, the seating will be so designated but if you are a family that lives together then you certainly can sit together here at Grace so we want you to remember that we're going to uh, uh, also encourage uh, you to wear a mask uh, one like this which is a Grace uh, mask and they'll be here available for you if you have one it's not required that you wear a mask but we certainly would encourage it and there's no charge for these, but if you want to make a donation at the time you pick up one, that certainly uh, would go to a good cause, Grace. <laughs> and um, as you come in, uh, don't shake hands, don't hug like we often do. Uh, we want to uh, not do that uh, for the obvious reasons. And uh, the church service will be a little shorter, uh, 40 to 45 minutes. Um, the uh, things like uh, the collection uh, when we do the, the offering. The collection plate won't be passed around. It will be uh, uh, at a local designated place so you can place your offering into it. Uh, the bulletins won't be handed to you as you walk in. You'll pick up one. All of this type of thing we want to do to keep you safe and sound. And also the uh, Sunday seminars won't uh, start again, nor will the uh, children's services. Uh, and also the nursery. All of that will resume when we feel that it is the safe and appropriate time to do that. Uh, next Sunday, uh, the 31st, uh, we would like you to be here a little bit early. The music will start at uh, 1020, uh, then the service will start at 1030. Um, we also uh, want to mention to you, as Chuck did, that it's going to be Pentecost Sunday. Uh, ironically, that's the day that we, uh, not ironically, I guess providentially is a better word to use, the day, the day that we decided to do this. And Chuck uh, would like all of us to wear something red, uh, which is the color of Pentecost, to, uh, to mark that. So again, next Sunday, May 31st, we look very forward to seeing all of you, uh, if you feel it's the appropriate time for you, 
to come back to Grace and let's regather. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Sam, and thank you to the leadership of Grace, and we are so grateful to God for the way He is leading us and guiding us. And I want you to know, and I'll probably say this again before our broadcast finishes, that there is a place for you at Grace. While we will have limited seating, there is a place for you at Grace, and we would love to see you here. Uh, love to see you back or love to see you come uh, for the first time. At this point in our worship service, we now uh, come to a time of confession. We are reminded by God's Word in the letter of James if we claim that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we will confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Therefore, with candor, humility, and awe, let us go before the throne of grace. Let us pray. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sins, and whose, in whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts, Cleanse us from all our offenses. Deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires. And with reverent and humble hearts, may we draw near to you, confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. And now let us offer up to our gracious God the confessions of our hearts in this time of silence. Father, thank you for hearing and answering all of our prayers. We do so with a humble and contrite heart, confident of your graces. We know in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And friends, who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. And Christ reigns in glory for us. Christ prays for us. All who are in Christ are a new creation. The old is passed away and gone. And beholding Christ Jesus, our lives begin fresh and new. And so, friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And Jesus said, My peace I give you. My peace I leave unto you. Not as the world gives do I give unto you. My peace I give you. As recipients of that gift of, of God's power and peace and His presence and His grace, we now have the opportunity to share that peace with our brothers and sisters. We can do that through our virtual means. As you, uh, as you chime in on the comment section on our live broadcast, and those of you, you can just stand right now. You don't leave your location, but just look at your brothers and sisters through your masks, with your eyes, with your words, pass the peace of Christ with, with one another. going on in here. I saw somebody hugging and then I realized, oh, wait a minute, they're married. They can do that. So I hope maybe you're hugging a loved one where you are this morning. Uh, we move now with grateful hearts to receive an offering. And I know that many of you have continued to be faithful in your giving to the, the ministry of the church. And I want you to know that your leadership uh, determined very early on in our process that we were going to continue to, to pay our part-time, our hourly staff. They've not missed um, a, a pay period. And, and we are very, very blessed and grateful that we've been able to uh, at least instill that, that bit of continuity and um, uh, continued resources for those who need it. And uh, your gifts are helping make that possible. We've not lost a day of work uh, at, the, at the new location of our church building at Regal Point. And that's a blessing as well. And your gifts are making that possible. And so the gifts you give online, the gifts that you will offer this morning are continuing the work of our Lord as His kingdom comes on earth 
as it is in heaven. So as you feel led this morning, safe, safely uh, and orderly, you can come and place your offerings in uh, the basket on the communion table this morning or in the basket as you exit the worship space this morning. But we would also love to receive your gifts of gratitude for the, for the glory of Jesus Christ and the work He's called us to do this morning. Let's do that at this time. Uh, that song has never sounded sweeter in this space because we do acknowledge you as the giver of every good and perfect gift. All blessings flow so freely and abundantly from you. And Father, we have been blessed individually, as families, as a church family, as a country. Uh, you've blessed this nation, our home sweet home, and we praise you for your gracious blessings to us. But we know that they come with responsibility, for we are blessed to be a blessing, Father. So use the gifts that are given, use these lives that are surrendered, and may it all be for your glory, Father. We raise this prayer of great thanksgiving and praise. And today, Father, I want to offer a, uh, a special, well, two special thanksgivings. I want to give you thanks for the long and beautiful life of Virginia Porter. Father, you saw fit to leave her on this earth as a beautiful vessel of your love and your grace for 99 years. And this past week, you called her home. And we know that she is safe in your care and that her family who celebrates her life but grieves the loss are in your care as well. And Father, I also want to give you thanks and praise for two other vessels of your love and your grace and your blessing to us and to so many as they celebrate 68 years of marriage. And what a witness and testimony that relationship, their lives have been and are to us for Dave and Aline Giles. And Dave saw fit to honor his bride 
with the flowers that uh, can be seen by those in the worship space and uh, by those on the live stream off to my left, probably to their right on the screen. But Father, this is a celebration of, of a life committed to you and to each other by your grace and your blessing. Bless them, Father, with more years of good health and happy life blessed life together so that they continue to bless. Father, bless us now by the blessing of your word that we hear read and proclaimed. May it quicken our minds, pierce our hearts, and lead our wills into your perfect freedom and service for the glory of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Let all God's children say, Amen, amen. and Amen. You may be seated. We have two scripture lessons to, uh, to hear this morning. One is from the first chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. And then we will turn over to uh, the powerful letter of 1 Peter. But from the Acts of the Apostles, I'll read verses 1 through 8. Listen to God's word. In the first book, O Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up. After he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking of the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me. For John baptized with water, before many days you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will, will it be at this time that you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons for which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said this, as, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we turn to the letter of First Peter first uh, in chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, and then chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Continue to hear God's word for us today. And Peter writes, Beloved, do not be surprised by the fiery ordeal which comes upon you to prove you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. If you are reproached by the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of the glory and of God rests upon you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that in due time He may exalt you. Cast all your anxieties upon Him, for He cares for you. Your adversity, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experience of suffering is required from your brothers and sisters throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to His eternal glory in Christ, will Himself restore, establish, and strengthen you. To Him be the dominion, now and forever and ever. Amen and amen. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may have heard it said, even uh, over these past few weeks in the midst of this pandemic coronavirus season, never let a good crisis go to waste. Have you heard that? Well, I hope that you are not letting this crisis in which we find ourselves go to waste. Um, and I want to ask you this morning, how have you made use of this COVID-19 uh, season of quarantine, this pandemic. What have you learned about yourself? How have you changed in these days? What is different about you? Maybe about your worldview, your experience of your relationships with others. How will you never be the same because of what has transpired? Have you grown during this time? Or have you diminished your faith? Are you closer to God 
Are you better for your friends? Are you a better friend of our Lord Jesus Christ? Have you struggled to find hope? Have you grown in your faith? Have you experienced the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit during these days of detention? Well, if you have not, it is not too late. While we are experiencing a soft opening this morning, and there are actually a few more people in here, about 20 or so, it's nice to see fresh faces. I love Ryan Clements. I love Julie Hobbs. I love Kathy and her playing. I love Sam Hall and Larry Henry at the door. But it's nice to see some other folks in here this morning. And next week... Uh, if you feel so led as a covenant partner or a friend or a, uh, a member of the community at large, we're welcoming you to come. It will be limited capacity. But I, I want you to know that when you are ready, there is a place for you at Grace Church. And, th- and this, this is a place where you will be greeted with open arms and virtual hugs. Remote pats on the back. Um, you, you, will, you may not see the, the smile on the mouth because of the mask, but you will see the light in the eyes as you come back or come for the first time in this place. But whenever you get here, there is a place for you at Grace. We are connected as a community of faith who follow the risen Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior of our our souls, the Savior of the world, and we stand upon His Word as truth, and it guides our lives. I don't want anyone to miss what God is doing in this season, during these unprecedented times. But I believe what God is doing in these days is He is bringing a rich harvest These are days of the harvest. I want to tell you this morning, and I want to tell you, my friends, as I see your faces this morning, this is a season of revival. This is a season of great awakening in our country and in our world, and it starts right here in our own church and in our own community. The church is growing stronger. Even though we've been apart as a church, The church body is growing stronger. And I want to tell you that nothing can stop this movement of God of which we are a part in which we get to participate in in these days and times by God's grace. And as glorious as all of this is, there there are going to be opportunities that we never imagined possible. There are going to be miraculous transformations in our lives, in the lives of the people in which we share this good earth. There are going to be conversions. There is going to be excitement. There is going to be joy. There is going to be manifestation of the Holy Spirit. There is going to be power. There are going to be baptisms. And I don't want any of us to miss any of this. But as glorious as all of this will be, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a cakewalk. There are going to be sacrifices that will have to be made. There are going to be heartaches that will be endured. There are going to be hard choices that need to be made. There are going to be rocky roads that need to be uh, negotiated and rough waters to be navigated. There is going to be tremendous need in people around us that we will be called to meet those needs, spiritual needs and physical needs as we come out of this time of quarantine and pandemic. I don't want us to miss it, though. And Peter did not want the early church, those Christians to whom he addressed this letter that we read a portion of this morning, Peter did not want the early church, the early followers of Jesus, to miss what the Holy Spirit was doing in their lives or to misunderstand what it was that they were experiencing and what the Holy Spirit was doing and what they were going through. In 1 Peter, in the fourth chapter, verse 12, we read, Beloved, 
Do not be surprised by the fiery ordeal which comes upon you to prove you or, as you could translate, to test you as if you are going through something strange that is happening to you. We're not sure exactly what the fiery trial was to which Peter referred. It may have been the fact that Christians, in being martyred for their faith in Jesus Christ, were literally set ablaze and used as torches at the parties and the wild gatherings of some of the Roman leaders like Nero and Caligula. The treatment of Christians during the early days of the church was horrific and hard. And Peter's addressing these followers of the Christ during these difficult times. He says, this is nothing new. Don't be surprised by this. It should not be unexpected. And we can think back of the echoing of even Jesus' words in the Sermon on the Mount in the fifth chapter of Matthew's Gospel where He said to His followers, Blessed are you when people persecute you and revile you and utter all kinds of things against you falsely on My account. But rejoice and be glad, for so they persecuted the prophets who came before you. We're blessed to suffer for the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ. Verse 13, he says, Rejoice when you share in Christ's suffering. Rejoice because His glory is being revealed. His glory rests upon you. When I read this this passage... And this, this, uh, this image of fiery ordeals was referenced by, uh, by the Apostle Peter. It reminded me of words that I shared on Ash Wednesday during a service here back uh, in February, it was. And at that service, I reminded people, there is no Easter without ashes, There is no crown without a cross. There is no resurrection without a crucifixion. And I told them that the season of Lent leading to Easter was a time of transformation. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we are not called to be static or get stuck or stay the same, but we are to flourish and transform and grow. How? More and more into the image of Jesus Christ Himself. To see Jesus who He is, as pure, as holy, as obedient, as surrendered, as selfless to the will and the work of His Father. And we too, I reminded us, they're called to see ourselves as we are. Sinful and needing a Savior, needing forgiveness, needing grace so that we can grow in grace and come more and more into the image of of the, of the Lord that we know and serve in Jesus Christ. And so I, I, I invited people to enter into the furnace of God's love. Reminding how Scripture uh, references the process of being tested like a fine, a fine metal. And to test a metal means to heat it to the highest temperatures so that the impurities of that precious metal are then burned off and the dross is removed. The lighter elements lift to the top and are consumed by the heat, the copper, the nickel, the zinc, and it is scraped off so that what is left is pure and precious And so we are called to go through the same fiery ordeals in our own lives as we look at ourselves honestly and and vulnerably to say, Lord, what is it in my life that needs to change so that I will be more like Jesus? And it's, 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 it's a process of transformation and change, and it's a difficult process to go through. How has this time changed you? 
Because this season of Lent is now the season of Easter approaching the season of Pentecost. And and we are still in that time of transformation. Maybe we never leave that time of being changed from one form of glory to another. But what I do know is that the refiner's fire is for our good. That this process of transformation is for His glory if we are to be like Jesus. And the question is, are we willing to go there? Are we willing to subject ourselves to the furnace of God's love? To say to the Lord, like David, wash me, purge me, test me, burn up in me, melt away from me anything that is not pleasing to you or that is not of you. And this is a process that maybe you have discovered in these days. About ten weeks since we have been in worship together. About ten weeks that we have been in quarantine and sheltering in place and limited exposure. But I pray that it has been a time for you to draw close to the Lord, to look honestly at yourself and ask for that transformation by the grace and the power of of the Holy Spirit to take place and to continue in your life and to be like David, to say, Lord, purify me. I sacrifice myself to you. Create in me a clean heart, O God, for the gift that you desire is a, is a surrendered and contrite heart, O God. You will not despise it, but create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew within me a right spirit. I pray that this time for you has been a time of of change, transformation, of humbling yourself, of watching, of being watchful, not fearful, of being expectant, not anxious, of being peaceful because of the peace of Christ, of being able to cast all your cares upon the Lord who cares greatly for you as His very own knowing that the God of all grace has called you and called us to His eternal glory in Jesus Christ and to important transforming work in these days as we pray for and work for and anticipate seeing His kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven, restoring and establishing us for His service. I believe that this is happening now. I believe it will happen in this week to come and next week as we begin to regather. I believe it will continue to unfold this summer and even into this exciting fall. And we are called to be sober and watchful, as Peter said. I think these, there are evidences of God's movement among us. Now, this seem, may seem tried and trivial, but it sure did strike me. And you may have seen this. I mentioned it on one of the daily devotionals that uh, the TV show, the cultural uh, icon show, The Voice, where they take these amateurs, these unknown people that, uh, that sing for coaches, and then they're chosen and cultivated to see who has the best voice. And do you know who won The Voice this time around? Todd Tillman from Meridian, Mississippi. He's 41 years old. He and his wife, who were high school sweethearts, got married in 1998. They had three children. And then they adopted two, two sisters from South Korea, but they weren't done. They had three more children. They've got eight. That's amazing in and of itself. Todd Tillman is the oldest person to win the voice. He's 41 years old. But the thing that astounded me the most is he's a pastor. He's a pastor. Of all people. But people during this TV show, during this, this season, they noticed that, that whether they were Christian or not, there was something different about this young man. They, they, they were attracted to his peaceful nature, his, his serene attitude, his humble spirit, his, his genuine sense of humor. And in the, in the finale, the song that he sang for the final was a song by a Christian group called Casting Crowns, I Can Only Imagine, 
which is a beautiful uh, picture painted of a person imagining what it's going to be like when this life is over to stand in the presence of Jesus Christ, the crucified, the risen, the living one. What will I do when I stand in front of Jesus? I can only imagine. Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or to your knees will I fall? And that's the song that he sung that won the TV show, The Voice. A song that speaks of a deep relationship with Jesus. A loving of God with soul, psyche, mind, and strength. And my friends, that's what it takes. A deep relationship with Jesus. A surrendering to our loving God, body, soul, mind, and strength that enables us by the power of the Holy Spirit to experience His living presence here and now and to love others as we have been loved in Christ Jesus. And when we do this, it becomes obvious to other people, like it was obvious something was going on in Todd Tillman's life. And the same might be true for us, and I pray that it is and will be, that people will see in us a passionate joy, a genuine uh, humility, and a great love for a great God. And people will see what is going on in us and say, what is it about you that's different? Why do you have that joy? And how do I get it? In 1 Peter, in the, in, the, in, in the chapter before where we read this morning, he says, Always be prepared to share the, the account for the, wit, for the hope that you possess in you. Always be prepared to share a witness for the hope that is in you. And so that brings me back to where we started Is that hope being cultivated in you? Is that transformation taking place in you? How are you being changed? Are are you ready for what is to come? Will you miss what God is doing in you or in, in, in this world? The need has never been greater. The task has never been more challenging. We know that in these days, Google searches for prayer has skyrocketed. Bible sales, 62% up. Talk about investment. People are hurting. People are experiencing more hardship, and there's more hardship to come. And the church has never been more important in these days. I said on, on March 15th, as we entered into this time, I said, Church, we are made for this. And it's never been more true. And it's never been more important. And it's time now for us to step up privately and publicly throughout the day to to pray in our challenges, to thank God in our blessings, to to ask God for help in, in the needs that we experience and ask for God's guidance in the decisions that we need to make. And to keep that conversation with our loving Lord going all day, privately and publicly. For no matter what you face, tomorrow, the next day, or the next week, your heavenly Father is as close as your next prayer. And it's true. I heard this past week a story. A story of a man who was bedridden late in his life. And he had become despondent with his situation and felt like he had grown distant to the Lord. And so he called on his pastor to ask what he should do. And his pastor told him, I want you to have someone pull a chair next to your bed. And I want you to begin to speak to that chair as if Jesus himself were sitting in that chair. And this bedridden elderly man began to do that and found something renewed within him and drawn closer to his Lord. Late one night, the pastor received a phone call. And it was the man's daughter. And she informed the pastor that the man had passed away just that evening late. And she said to him, But I don't understand something. I went in to check on him at one point, and he was fine. I went back a few minutes later, and he was gone. 
But what I don't understand is why his hand was in the chair next to his bed. And the pastor simply said, I do. Is your hand in that chair? Will you pray with me, please? Father God, we thank you and we praise you that you are the one on whom we can cast all of our care because you care for us and you have shown us by dying for us, by rising for us, by sending your Holy Spirit for us and by never leaving or forsaking us. And Father, we know that in these days and we will know it in the days to come. And so today, Father, we place our hands not only in yours, but our lives. And ask, Father, by your great grace that you would do with us what you please for our good, for the good of others, and all for your glory. Today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen and amen. Thank you for being here. Thank you for leading. Thank you for following. Thank you for being here today. And if you feel ready, come next week. But whenever you are ready, there's a place for you here. And there is a place for you in God's kingdom. And I hope you know that today and can walk in it tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Be blessed today and in this week to come. And as we prepare to go out into the world to serve, have courage. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Love and honor everyone rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of His face to shine upon you and give you peace. And all God's children, peace today and forevermore. Amen and amen. Are the tools to clean the bathroom in there?